Well, hi, and thanks for joining me here in my shop. Today I'm going to be putting this radio back together. At least that's what I plan to do. So I've got a number of different parts to kind of deal with. This is the uh, speaker grill cloth. I took it out last night and, and washed it. The uh, opening where the speaker is was just all black in here. But now you can hardly tell. It was even dirty, so that came out great. This is a piece of glass that the owner of this radio had installed in place of the proper dial glass. So good thing that he did this. Uh, it covered up the uh, big hole in the radio and kept you know 10 or 20 years worth of dust from going inside there. But of course it has no dial marks. So, uh, so I think this is finished. The new one, which we'll open when we need to, is inside here. This, this uh, dial plate should fit and work perfectly on this radio, correct bands and everything, but it's actually intended for another radio, but a very, very similar one. So once I open this, we're going to discover if this is really the correct size. I don't even know for sure. Can't know for sure till we do it. Okay, knobs, screws, stuff like that. That's no big deal. This guy. So. This is the uh, form on which an antenna is wound, and the antenna, or this thing which is connected to the antenna, is slid right up here, like this. Uh, a lot of these radios, uh, this style size of radio, uh, have this. And this is called the capacitance antenna, or the capacity antenna. It's, it's just, it's just, my, now one, two, three, four, four or five turns of wire, and it's connected to the antenna terminal. It just sits up here. And so exactly what this is doing for the radio, I don't know, but there are instructions uh, related to it for alignment and things like that. It has to be connected, has to be disconnected. I've tried to fi find out exactly what this is. Now I know in other antenna, um, like for instance, uh, my own. Back in the day, when I was a teenager, and my CB radio, I had a big CB antenna on my house. And at the very top of the antenna, top of the whip, were three little pieces sticking out like this. And that was called the capacitance hat. And it has some bearing on the capacitance of the antenna. It, it, and I couldn't tell you what it, what it is now. I remember reading about it so long ago, and more recently trying to find out what this is doing. So I don't know if this is doing the same thing or not. I don't know what this is doing, but it's going to do something. It came like this, no wire, no nothing, just sitting in the radio. Probably, I'm going to guess, the owner didn't even know it was in there, just sitting like that. It has a little locky, little locky thing here to lock it in. It's interesting that it's made to be slid in and out so easily, too. That, that, that's kind of a curious thing. Why didn't they just make this and fit it in on a permanent basis? Maybe the answer to that is when you pull the chassis out, you've got to pull this out with it sometimes. I don't know. So I just ignored this the whole time. Maybe this is going to have an effect on uh, on the alignment of the radio. So even though I don't know how it works, I certainly know how you wire this. There's nothing to it. I'm just going to find some nice wire and loop it around and just remake what was there originally and let it do its thing, whatever that thing is. Maybe that's going to be first step is to, to sort this out. Next step will be fitting in fitting in this, then uh, then we're going to deal with this. I think that's the order. So first this guy, I've got to find some nice wire to put on that. Okay, I'm going to wire up the antenna here. It's got to be pretty easy to do. I see uh, what look like wire holes right here, one over here. I see a larger hole here and a little hole there. I'm thinking the larger hole has something to do with the uh, little, little nubbin up here that, that kind of locks it in. So I'm thinking it goes this way. I don't think it's I don't think any of this is critical. So let's put in the wire. I mean, it's interesting how the wire is arranged in this. In that it uh, it's kind of a flat, flat sort of top thing, you know, flat. If I was gonna, if this is a capacitance thing, I guess, could you look for, a, a, you know, the plate? Maybe that's what this is. This is one plate in a capacitor. Yeah. 
The other plate maybe is the radio chassis. The radio and everything, I don't know. So we can experiment with this a little bit once I have it fixed up. Okay, now, so it's going to go in like, oh, I've got the uh, wire ending on the wrong end. <laughs> How do you like that, eh? I could just do it like this, but now it's coming up instead of down. <laughs> yeah, leave it to me to find the one way you, you, you can't do this. Okay, let me start over. This time I'll be smarter. Well, actually, I'm, I'm at the same level of smartness here. Nothing happened. We'll start here, so I want an end coming down to reach the back of the radio. Something like that. So we get that much wire sticking out. <coughs> Excuse me. That's, in there. That's more than enough wire. I'm going to a little more wire up here this way. And one extra turn. So, you know, is there some precision to this thing? In, uh, well, it just doesn't look right, does it? Somehow. Hmm. You know, I'm going to leave it like that. here. <clears throat> okay, I've got a little lug I want to put on the end here. Actually, it's a big lug. Of metal here. <gasps> the tip of my soldering iron's broken. Oh my gosh. What happened? Oh boy. Well, let's see if we can get away with soldering a little more with it, but that tip is not long for the world. Son of a gun. Yeah, I've got my backup soldering iron ready just in case, but oh my gosh, I'm not expecting that to happen. Never had a tip come off like that before. Kinda like the soldering iron too. Oh, 
disappointing is that? I mean, that look at this. This this is quite a machine. Look, look at it's over there in the corner. A little bit of trouble seeing all the this thing here, all the settings and controls and everything on it. It all comes down to the tip failing on it. Yeah. Okay, so I think the capacitance antenna is ready to go. That's probably going to be hot for a while yet. Great. Okay, let's take a look inside there and see what we can see. So I can see this is going to be in the way now. Tuck it up here somewhere. Um, so the old glass, where's the old glass here? I'm, I'm guessing this was cut specifically for here. Yes, Peanut, I know you're there. It's perfectly the right size, but there's some foamy stuff. And when you're going to lay up something like a piece of glass against a piece of wood, you can't, can't trust the wood is perfectly square. And you can't clamp this in uh, against something hard. You want to clamp it in against something a little soft, like a, a little bit of foam or something so there's some just pressure follow what I'm saying I think you do and of course this stuff this stuff is as hard as a rock and some of it is here on the edge of the glass but most of it has remained right in here now I could just put the new glass right in against that it's not going to work it's just it's just not going to be very good I think I've got to pick all this stuff off let me take a little bit of a closer look at it. Let's see. And then what, what have I got? I've got some great, all oh, this stuff is just coming right off. Just coming right off. Okay, so I'll clean all that off and get rid of it everywhere. And I gotta come up with some other material to put in there. Because I can't lay up the glass right onto the uh, right onto there. What have I got? I, think I might have something. I might. I might have something. Okay, so I'm going to carry on with the the cleanup, and I'm going to entertain my cat. Right, Peanut? Right. Okay, I went and got my ugliest, oldest paint scraper. That stuff's going to come off real easy. Hard stuff to get off. <laughs> and if I were to leave one big bump of this stuff in there and then clamp down the glass. There's a chance I would crack the glass right through the middle. And why did the glass break in the first place? Of course, we, we don't know the real reason. Uh, it could have been, you know, banged into. But it also could be because of some kind of stress building up on this material going hard. And uh, who knows? Uh, you know, that may have strained the glass and then something came along and just knocked it enough to crack it. Now th these pieces on the side are actually still a little bit flexible, but I'm going to have to do something. I have to be consistent all the way around whatever it is I do. So I'm going to have to dig this stuff out too. And you know, I think I'm going to remove these uh, clamps completely here. Well, they're almost out now. Get them out of the way before I 
do some damage or something. Always impressed with these cabinets, how much uh, you know cabinetry type work goes into them, making these round bends, putting in these corner pieces, just everything, and how it's built. As compared to uh, what a molded plastic, you know, molded plastic, not very exciting. It's got a nice number in there, 812. That's probably the number of the guy who made it in '76. I don't know. Maybe that 812 is the front, so they'd have a bunch of 812s on the shelf when they're going to make this radio. I don't know, 76? I, I think they're indicating individual people. Okay, so that's, yeah, edges now. Yeah, this is completely different from the other stuff. This, this stuff is still soft and gooey. You know, maybe I should leave it. It's that soft. Yeah. It's definitely got some softness to it. Okay, got to clean up a little bit, then we're going to check out that piece of glass and see how it fits. These are uh, light uh, for uh, blocking the light bulb, little light bulb light. Let me clean up here a bit and we'll keep going. Okay, let's take a look. For now, I'm just going to slide this antenna out. There's no reason for it to be in there. It's just another thing in the way, a little bit in the way. I'll put it up there where I'll forget where I put it. Now, just looking at the original piece of glass for a moment. Okay, here we go. First I'm going to open up this guy here. For the first time. This came really well packed from the company that uh, sent it to me. So I'm not surprised it made it here without being broken. Let's see if I can get it out of here without breaking it. I even have vintage scissors and my shears. Let's put the danger tools away here. Washed out on the, uh, the screen above. Let's try the other camera here. Now, beautiful. Let's compare it with the other piece of glass first. I think that's a wise move. That's exactly the same. Exactly the same. I wonder if this is the original glass with all the uh, words. Uh, washed off of it, all the print. Isn't this fantastic? This is this is printed new. It's made in the USA. Beautiful. Of course, the prints on the back side. Of course. Feels feels exactly like a uh, like an original. It's beautiful. 
Okay, so this is going to work. Let me put it back in its paper. I'll try to keep my fingers off of it. Now, my question is, should we be putting it in now? I think, I think so. I, think, I, don't think, I don't think there's a better time to put it in. So I'm going to have to come up with something to put in here, mainly to block dust from falling into the radio. I may have just the right material for it. I'll go see if I can find it. So what I've got here is, uh, this This is actually like a wire covering, if you like. When I bought this uh, at a yard sale, I thought it was buying a bunch of black wire, but there's, there's no wire in here. It's just the cover, kind of. What it really means, though, is that this is a tube with with a bit of, uh, of uh, resilience to it. It's about the same width as the foam, well, if I can even call it foam, the, the piece that's in here. So I'm going to run a bead of this, or a line of this, along along the edge there. To do that, I think I've got to employ some more double-sided tape. Put that over there. Yeah, so that's why I'm going to do. I'm going to lay a couple of strips of double-sided tape in there and then fix some of this, some of this, uh, I don't know what to call it, tube, I guess, onto it. This tape is barely sticking because the surface is not not really good for tape. Now I just have to lay in this these pieces here. So I think with the foam, the foam comes right to the edge here, and so the glass is not back from the edge, whereas what I'm doing is going to be back. There's going to be a gap in here. I can roll, roll this. All right, I've stuck it down. I'll roll it up right near the top edge. The bottom edge, I guess, here. And that's going to flatten out when the glass goes in a little bit. And squeeze a little bit. And I don't want to get it right to the edge, but I think that's a little better. So the lower one is the one that's going to catch dirt. It's this one down here. That's going to be critical. I'm going to get rid of that overlap. thing the next thing I put the glass in the last thing the next thing is this this guy here now this fell out like it had one nail holding it and that was all okay, so it goes this way so I see a nail hole and I see a nail hole there likewise there's one here one here, but these these nails. I don't. I think this came out. There was one nail in it, holding it. That's all, and it was kind of stuck. I got double-sided tape here. It's grabbing too. So that the thing about positioning this is that there's an opening for the speaker here. I've got to get it. 
I get it pretty close. Well, that's weird now. The shape of the opening for the speaker is nothing like the speaker itself. Isn't that odd? You can actually see the uh, outline of the speaker edge here. So part of the speaker is 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 uh, is playing into this space, and part of it is just up against this block here. Well, it is what it is. I'm going to guess the designers of this radio saw this as a, a big uh, compromise. Obviously, they have to build the cabinet kind of out this way so it'll seal up against the uh, speaker. It's not going to seal over the top here, though. Or is it? Take, take a look. Take a look at how the speaker's arranged here. Let's take a good look at it. So it has this this piece right here. Hey, I can take this out and fit this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, like a wood or something like that. Then there's cardboard on the top. The cardboard is supposed to be the sealer. something like that. <coughs> so this bottom edge is supposed to come on, onto the top here. So the precision placement is really important in this. I get, I get this installed a little high and, and this piece is going to interfere here. And you know when you're putting the radio in you can't see these things. You don't know what you're pushing against. So, so, so this really does have to, uh, see if I get into trouble putting the chassis in, I'll know enough to lift it, because probably it's bumping in here, and lift it up over it. And then there's next to nothing holding this on. Tired old glue, I think. Oh, no, nails, there's a nail. One nail. One nail holding this. Yikes. I haven't even thought about how I'm going to hold it in. Okay, let's try positioning it once again. Let's see how this goes. Now, just going by the nail holes should be pretty good, I would think. Something like that. Now there are other marks on here I can spot. It, it, it kind of gets taped in there right away. Hey, number 812, you, you disappear when this goes on. Make sure this stuff doesn't end up out the window. Hanging out the window. Now, am I supposed to nail this in place? Something's got to hold it. It's not going to stay there on its own. There's a little bit of tape gripping it up here right now. Well, it was nailed in to begin with. I was punching nails right into the front of this radio. Um, now, I may have one of those nails. It fell out somewhere. And either I just abandoned it. It's lost on my bench or elsewhere. I don't know where it is, but it's a little tiny nail. Oh boy. You only have to put just a couple in to kind of hold it. Okay, let me uh, let me deal with the nails. Oh, guess what I just found. I just found two nails. Positioned exactly where I left them to be found. Isn't that something? That's amazing. <laughs> of course, I didn't remember I'd left them there. Okay, once again, I think checking this yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get. Put a nail in here. Oh! That hurt. That 
that hurt quite a bit. <laughs> That's my guitar finger. I'll never be able to play the guitar again. But that's okay, because I can't play it now anyway. Okay, don't push it down so hard. And uh, what was the smart thing I did with the other nail? I don't know. Okay, we'll tack that nail down. So I think I went right into the original hole. Now, here's the other nail right here. Or tack. I guess you'd call these tacks. Okay. That's not going very well. I think my nail set is uh, out in the garage. But we'll use this. so springy. <laughs> Jeez. Ah. Now the thing about this too is because the speaker is working against it, any looseness in this panel and uh, buzzing away, it's going to buzz away and there's some pretty, come to think of it, there's some pretty risky, risky spots. Can you see all the delamination in here? Can you see that? I don't know if that's really coming through. Yeah, all these individual pieces are delaminating right in here, probably from some moisture getting at this part of the radio. Yeah, but the real concern here is this flappy stuff. So you see, like if I don't get the radio in pushed hard against this, which is going to be difficult to do, then this has the ability to do that. And that's going to undo all my great radio work if I allow that to persist. Let's see what we can do here. Um, more little nails really the only way. Okay, gotta go hunt down some little bitty nails here. Well, I was just about to give up trying to find something and the last drawer I looked in, well, of course it's the last drawer I looked in, I found these. They look a little big. I could wash her up, uh, we'll wash them up. You can put a small nut on there, and it won't penetrate so far. I'm just so worried about going right through. Now, how realistic is that worry? I can see the thickness here through the hole. You know, if I just wash her this up a little bit. I think I can. I think I can use these. Good. Okay. Yeah, washers. I have to find washers now. Okay. Let's give one a go here. I've got three washers. I've got lots and lots of washers. Let's see if we can. I don't know if that's gonna work. Yep. Good. We'll just hope it's gonna go right through into the original hole. Okay. 
can only tighten things up so far with that uh, ripping screwdriver. Let's do it. Let's see if this will fit. Yep. Ooh, long ways down. Yeah. Just freaked me out if <laughs> if that screw had come through. It's right in this area here. No, I don't think it's anywhere near coming through. And that's not, not quite far enough yet. There, that's holding it. stick some glue under here I think glue that down that's pretty good just catching that one edge is really a we just have to catch this one over here now and that's probably going to be good enough we'll see The way this little screwdriver works, I don't know if you can see, probably can't see this on camera very well, but there's a, a piece in there that rotates. I don't know if you can see this. And pops back, it retracts, so you end up with this, you put the screw on, get on there, and you push, and it grabs the screw. There's other ways of doing this. Okay. It's this one I'm worried about here. So you can actually glue under the cardboard piece a little bit. A little higher too, but glue under here for sure. That's gotta happen. Okay, this is nothing more than some paper towel with water on it. I just want to wet this a little bit. This whole piece here I completely soaked when I was cleaning the uh, cloth completely drenched. Okay, and that's lots of water there. That's the help the glue. Now glue. Oh, I'm not quite ready. Hey. I'm gonna try and run some glue right in there. Yeah I should have done this long before I put this in. Da 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 da, da. what a dummy. Oh well, better late than never. I can come in through the window here. here. Good. That's going to glue it. Okay, 
sticks on there for whatever it's worth. Good. That's going to do it. Gorilla Glue. Mighty powerful advertising. Okay. So I think I got to let that kind of set up before I fiddle around some more in here. Give that a bit of time. Coming along. Won't be long before the glass goes in. Fantastic. Okay, let's fit in the glass now. Make sure I put it in facing the right way here. And, you know, there's a left and a right, and there's an issue to it. Um, let's see what happens when I put it in. fits perfectly. It's absolutely perfect. And there's bumper blocks here and here. And it's fitting right up against them perfectly. Excellent. See the bottom scale here is just disappearing. So I'm going to try to shift the glass upwards. Could be the window's just barely big enough for it, but I think that's good. I like that. That's good. Okay, and then we'll get the uh, the grips here. So these have a little bit of springiness to them in a couple of ways. And I'm sure you're supposed to tighten this just enough to kind of take up the uh, spring slack in them, I would say. Turned into a beautiful sunny day outside, but very cold. It's about 8 degrees now. But no wind, so you can sit in the sun. It feels great, and that's where I was. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon now. I guess I'll, I'll align the glass just before I tighten these down. I'll make one last alignment. Of it. So this class came from a company called Radio Days. Days is spelt D-A-Z-E. And they specialize in this kind of thing. And they make also uh, other uh, things you, you, you might imagine aren't really available uh, for a radio. Uh, for instance, if you're going to refinish your cabinet, when you're done, your numbers are gone. You know, the uh, uh, the words that are like volume, tone, things like that, those words are gone. You can buy those words, stick them back on. Well, th this particular case, when the fellow who refinished it uh, did it, he chose to preserve the words on the front. So he put some tape over the words, refinished the whole thing, then he peeled the tape away, and uh, he preserved the words, that's for sure. But it's not very good looking how he did it. In most cases, uh, when you get a cabinet like this refinished, it's goodbye to any writing that was on the front of it. Okay, I'll snug these up a little bit and see what we got. 
Snug them up so I can still move the glass around. Okay. The glass eventually will stick in place, I'm pretty sure. These uh, rubber uh, parts I put in are the rubbery parts. Okay. Uh, they'll eventually stick right to the glass, I'm pretty sure. So there you can see the, the words I was talking about here. So I, a much better way would be to take them right off because the refinishing job is very nice on this cabinet. Take them right off and then put on some new words. That would be a much better approach, but almost certainly the guy doing it had no idea. Okay, so I can see this is tipped on a bit of an angle. We can't have that. This is what people look at. This has to be nice and straight. I guess it's just another alignment task. That's beautiful. I love how that's fitting in there. That's excellent. Okay, a little bit of my rubber popped up over here. In you go. That's perfect. Now I'll lock it down. Yeah. What an improvement. So I couldn't get this dial glass for this radio. They, they, they don't make an A23 dial glass. But the uh, person at the company did a little research and said, hey, here's another dial glass. Pretty sure it's going to work perfectly for you. Over tighten these now. I want to hear the sound of this glass breaking. That would be disappointing. Not expensive either. You know, and for what you might imagine, you would pay for that piece of glass. Okay. Now, now I, I didn't bother putting these pieces in. I don't exactly know. They were probably in like that. You know what? I'm going to put these in. Uh, the objective is to make sure, like the light goes in here, and no light gets through onto the back here. Believe it or not, you want no light. Uh, the object is to get the light to shine right into the edge of the glass here. You know, it's like I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to fix this because I'm. I think I really need to do it. So here we go. Kind of undoing what I just did. So it, it's really important that the uh, light bulb filament, actual white filament, lines up with the edge of the glass. If you put the wrong type of light bulb in, you can't line it up. And you know, you'll, you'll see light, but you won't see the fantastic way these things look when they're done right. Uh, when a thing like this is done right, they look great. And that's what I want to have happen here. There. That's a little more trouble than I thought. Do the same on the other side now. So it would be pretty easy to, to take these pieces of paper, not realize what they're for, and actually put them on the other side, thinking they're somehow blocking the light from coming out here. No, actually blocking the light from getting in behind here. That's the objective. And if you look over at the radio, if you haven't noticed, this panel that was uh, pretty wrecked up, uh, the paint on it was flaking off, I've repainted it basically black. So when you look through the glass, all you're going to see is this pointer. Fantastic. Um, now, these are the lights that came with it. These have a short bulb on them. So let's take a look at how they fit in here. And see, because a, a regular 47 has a longer bulb. 
which means the filament, see the filament is close to the top of this bulb. Yeah, I'm sure you can't see it, but it's, it's right up close to the top. So that makes this really certainly possible. Now if we look on the radio, the, uh, the light uh, fixture here should be movable. Should The light socket should be on a shaft here. Oh, this is really stuck. It's stuck solid. This one's pretty stuck too, but I, I'm pretty sure yeah, these are slidable brackets. They're just stuck in place. We're going to leave them stuck where they are. There's a chance they are stuck exactly where they should be. There's a good chance just putting these lights in and they're going to show up exactly where they should. So, uh, so where are we at now? So we're ready to put the radio in, I think. I think that's where we've got to. We've got to the point of putting in the radio. Both these lights were working, so I'm going to leave them. They, they look fairly new, actually. These two. Put these in. It almost looks as if this, this, these have been jammed up against the front of the radio, and they bent out a little bit from being jammed up. Maybe the wrong bulbs were in here before. Better take this guy off. Okay. Slide them in there. Slide them in and see what we end up with. Are you forgetting anything? I don't think so. Okay. Around you come. get this out. Way off. What's happened? There it goes. No idea what was going on there. cardboard I put in there is showing up. Uh, you know I did, I put the cardboard in kind of the right way but the wrong way. <laughs> I, think, I don't think that was the right thing to do in the end. Even though I gave a really good explanation for it. Unless, unless what's happened, it's just simply gotten caught on this edge. I think that's what's happened. It's fine on one side. Pull the paper out. Hmm. Right idea, wrong way around. 
think is kind of what I got here. And that malarkey about it uh, wanting to block the light from the front was exactly that. A bunch of malarkey. I can't go in this way. I'm not gonna, uh, look at this. How can I get it out? Okay, so that's the mo that's the movement. Uh, that's how you do it. Good luck on me. Okay, so all that stuff I said about this piece of paper. Skip it. I did like the idea of it being under there though. put it on the outside it's doing exactly what I said it was not intended to do as soon, as soon as I find them how to do with it like that. gotta go somewhere of paper go. Obviously I didn't figure out the maneuver. Let's try that. Okay, so I think I figured it out. There's a piece of wood right under here. And you gotta get this antenna to go on this side of the piece of wood to get it in. That's what I think is going on. How come this is? So I'm ru I can tell I'm running up against the paper already. To go in quite a bit further, I'm going to do this. The paper up in behind there where I can't really get at it. Well, that, that feels like that's the end of the road right there tubes half out. <laughs> Get back in there. Um, that looks like that's the end of the road. Let's take a look at the front. Sure looks like I can see, uh, looks like bumpers stopping it from coming any more forward. There's the dial moving. Does that look great? That looks great, eh? That pointer looks like it's on a bit of an angle. Can't have that either. How am I going to deal with that now that it's in? So, can you see that it's lining up almost perfectly here? Except for the angle of the 
So that's a good sign. Let's see if it does the same thing on this end. Goes a touch past. Probably the pointer's a little off on the string. How right, am I going to straighten this guy out now? Again, this is the kind of thing you look at when you look at one of these radios. You, you look at the pointer, you look at the screen, you see the front and the knobs. It's all got to be just right to, to really get the wow factor. Probably shouldn't do anything with anything until I turn this radio on and check out a little bit of the accuracy on the dial right away. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that because that sounds like fun. About time to have some fun. We'll see how close we are on the dial. Hopefully we can find some short wave here somehow. Or I'll use my signal generator if that's not going to do the trick. Oh, we're going to find out about the lighting. Ooh, okay, let's make this a little more dramatic. dark in here now. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty dark. Okay, switch on. That's a humdinger. I'm looking at it with my own eyes. It looks great. The, uh, the light is nowhere near lined up with the glass. The light is shining in underneath it. Not quite the way it should. But it sure looks good anyway. So let's now, I can't see what I'm doing. Uh, put a knob on the band change dial here. Okay, link in. Antenna link I'm talking about. Okay, link in. I get one station down here. You gotta turn the radio this way. Town Hall Swindle He's a blue liner on Great Britain. Uh, uh, ben Lake, uh, Robert Dow. So this is 590. Let's take a look. Look right at the dial. So the angle of the pointer is causing it to point a little wrong. If the pointer were perfectly straight, it would be pointing right at 590. That's great. Okay. And for fun, we'll take a romp through the short wave bands here. It's going to need to look an antenna. Well, that's interesting. Now, I just connected the ground line from my antenna. Here's the actual antenna feed, and it just boosted this radio hugely. If it's because basically I put a ground on the radio. Six eighty. Six forty. Good. 610. Right there. 590. Great. Let me put on this antenna now. Okay. So I've got it on. Let's open the link here. On AM, what happens? Link out. Link open didn't make any difference. What's going on with that? You take off that antenna. Hmm. 
Okay. Go to the short wave band. That's a 31 meter. Go. Well, we'll, we'll check it out. You never know. Okay, next band up. 25 meter band, 11, we should, we should get some stuff here. Oh. Cuba, okay, so I got, I haven't turned on the antenna, I gotta run it. Gotta run it, turn on That made any difference or not? But that got weaker. These coming from Cuba or uh, southern U.S. In, in Spanish. I know the chassis is not in far enough because these knobs are not sticking out far enough. So. Okay, let's try the 19-meter uh, band. Chance we might get WWV here. Short, short ways a little weird these days. Saudi Arabia. So that's someone singing the Quran. Almost certainly Saudi Arabia. So on the glass here, it has all the uh, cities. Vatican, Boston, Tokyo, Berlin, Philadelphia. Of course, they're not in those locations anymore. It's still neat to see them. Yeah. You, won't, you won't find Saudi Arabia. Back when this radio was made, Saudi Arabia had no money. That's about it. Well, not bad for one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so what's the deal with this radio now? Um, the deal is I'm pretty happy with how it's come out. I think I gotta take the chassis out one more time. Oh, you know what? I could tell if the bolt holes have lined up underneath. So I don't think these are sticking out quite far enough. And I, I just looking at the pointer, everything seems to be back just a little too far. But if the bolt holes line up, bolt holes, how many bolts? Well, three bolted. You know, I'm going to find out if I'm trying to stick a bolt in. So it's pretty hard to look up, up underneath one of these guys. Let's see. right in. So that's it. That is where the radio goes. Actually, I can't that in there, or can I? I don't, I don't need to take it out anymore. Okay, fantastic. The very last thing to do with this radio is a better verification of the uh, pointer setup. And if the, uh, I had to straighten out the pointer a little bit, and if it's not aligned properly, I can align it with the whole thing together. That's the idea. The way they make this radio and others like it. The uh, adjustments for the local oscillator that basically set up where the pointer is are easily accessible here from here. 
you just get on the read here. It's very easy to do. That's on purpose. That's, that's, that's so you can have it back in the cabinet and do the final alignment work that way. Fantastic. And, and this is still on. Turn off the power to it. Good. That's it. So I think I'm going to uh, go back outside where the weather is wonderful and uh, we'll do the final final on the next video including really listening to this in the evening under some much more ideal circumstances. Here in my shop the circumstances are far from ideal. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, one more to go on this guy. <laughs>